Who doesn't love a bite of dark and delicious chocolate? In our first episode of Looking Local, we find out how these artisanal delicacies are made. So the best part is here getting every morning and smelling that cocoa flavors in the air. Um, it's quite amazing. Um, tasting every batch of beans that we roast and how it translates into the chocolate and then coming up with new ideas of pairing different flavors that one would not necessarily expect to work with chocolate. So the very first process that we have to go through is to roast the beans. We roast it between 110 and 130 degrees Celsius, which is considered a, a light to medium roast. And we roast it anything between 30 and 45 minutes to develop those flavors. So the process of removing the husk is very simple. We drop the beans in at the top. There's a gear here that turns. The bean is very brittle. It just presses on the bean. The bean shatters. It falls down and we've built this little machine that um, just uses vacuum and air. It sucks away the husk that's lighter than the nip and the nip just drops down to the bottom of the, the bucket. Once we have the, the cocoa nip, we put it into this machine that is called a conch. There's a grinding process that happens. During that time period, the nips are refined. The machine heats up. The felt fat that's in the cocoa bean starts to, to melt and we end up with what we call a cocoa paste. We add some cocoa butter and some sugar to it when we make our dark chocolate and then we refine it. But this time when we refine it, we are looking for particle size. Okay. okay. So we try and bring the, all the particles that's in the chocolate down to 15 microns. And the reason why we go so fine is because when you eat chocolate, you want a smooth experience. Once the, the chocolate has been made, we have to temper it first. All the tempering process entails is we're heating up the chocolate between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, we destroy all the fat crystals that's in the chocolate. Okay. We then lower it down to 28 and we create what they call a beta-5 fat crystal. I didn't know making chocolate was such a scientific process. It's chemistry all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we mold it into molds and then we, we put it onto trolleys. And we put it into a cold room and we allow it to crystallize or harden. And, and after that, we just unmold the chocolate and it's ready to be packed and to be consumed. While the process of making chocolate will make your mouth water, it's the business model at Cocoa Fair that had us impressed. We're a social business. Um, for us, it's important to, to make a difference. And one of the biggest problems in South Africa is unemployment. So we thought one way to do that is um, we pack every bar that we make is packed by hand. So that creates a very simple and entry point level job for somebody. Um, nobody that works at Coca Fair has got background in chocolate or formal training in chocolate. Everybody started here as a packer and then if they have the right attitude and aptitude and show their commitment, um, we start to teach them the rest of the process. Coco Fair's chocolates are fair trade. Here's why this logo is so important to the business. So our product's a single origin product. Um, currently our beans come from Panama. Um, the bean's got a very citrus and fruity flavor to it that is actually natural in the bean. And through that process we try and preserve it um, in, into the chocolate. So we have quite a wide range of chocolates. We have white chocolate, milk and dark and each one is different. We have a, quite a big range of percentages in terms of the um, cocoa content. The most cocoa in the world is actually organic um, because the guys really don't have money for pesticides and um, fertilizer. Um, ours is grown under the gold standard of forestation, so it is very much looking after the environment. And then the other part around sustainability that is equally important for me is the, I'm looking after the people. If we're not going to look after the people in the co cocoa industry, the guys are either going to leave their farms and go to cities and not farm anymore, or they're going to give up farming cocoa and they're going to farm sugar or rubber, as, um, because they, the probability of them earning a higher income from that is a lot better. From bean to bar, each step of the chocolate making process is done with love and care. Right now, we're not where Europe is yet, and we're not where the United States is yet in terms of artisanal chocolate, but we're fast catching up. And I think um, in the next few years, you're going to see a lot more happening in the chocolate space in South Africa.